our respected chief guest, Dr. R. S. Kiyatilaka, the senior most consultant oncologist of this nation, honorable past presidents, members of the college, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you all. Thank you, Dr. Mumi, for your kind introduction. I am very much humbled and honored to take up the presidency of Sri Lanka College of Oncologists this year. Before the Sri Lanka College of Oncologists was formed, oncologists had been members of the College of Radiologists. Our chief guest, Dr. R. S. Jayatilaka, being the pioneer in the first field of the clinical oncology, contributed a lot in commencing the local MD in clinical oncology program at the PJM University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. Late Dr. Sarat Abhayakon became the first PJM board certified consultant oncologist on the 1st of February 1989. In the year 2003, it was realized that oncologists need to have a separate professional body to handle many challenging issues relating to the field of oncology and consequently the Sri Lanka College of Oncologists was inaugurated in the very same year. Late Dr. Kumar Virsagara was the founder president of our college. There were 12 eminent senior oncologists who have served as presidents of this college before me taking this position. Although the good standing benchmark created by the predecessors is difficult to meet, I believe and hope that I can do some more improvement towards providing better care for our cancer patients, meeting many challenges together with you all. Today in my presidential address, I would like to talk about challenges in cancer care that we need to face together. We as oncologists have obligations to involve in all activities relating to cancer prevention, early detection, diagnosis, treatment and caring of cancer patients. Among males, the first three common cancers were oropharyngeal, lung and colorectal cancer. Whereas among females, that were breast, thyroid and colorectal cancer. Twelve breast cancers are being diagnosed per day and two patients die per day as well. Among the children too, the cancer incidence is in rise about half of the patients are with hematological and CNS malignancies. If we again analyze the adult cancer incidence pattern among the males, oropharyngeal cancer and lung cancer were the first two common cancers throughout. But in the early days, colorectal cancer was in fifth position and now it has become the third common cancer. Among females, breast cancer was the commonest cancer Earlier days, cervical cancer was the second in second position and colorectal cancer was in seventh position. Currently, thyroid cancer and colorectal cancer have become the second and third common cancers. Decreasing cervical cancer incidence may probably due to the better screening with pap test, HPV DNA tests. In future, the incidence may further drop with the impact of the recently started HPV vaccination. We have entered into the cervical cancer elimination program targeting in the year 2030, where our targets were are 90% of girls fully vaccinated against HPV by 15 years of age, 70% of women screened using high precision tests by 35 and 45 years, 90% of women identified with cervical cancers are treated. We need to be alarmed about the increasing number of colorectal cancer among both sexes. It may be due to changing risk factors like change of food habits, having more of young foods, increased adolescent obesity, and not being physically active, etc. A study on colorectal cancer among both sexes using the cancer registry data revealed that the major increase of incidence is happening among ages 50 and not below the age of 50. It's applicable to both sexes. Recently noted rise in thyroid cancer 
may be due to the overdiagnosis with ultrasound scanning. This phenomenon is being observed in the rest of the world as well. Anyhow, it needs further study. For the cancer, cancer control, we have a good mechanism at the Ministry of Health level with the involvement of Secretary, Director General Health Services, DDG non communicable Disease, Director Policy, National Cancer Control Program, Health Promotional Bureau and Family Health Bureau plus professional bodies, mainly the Sri Lanka College of Oncologists and other related bodies. National Cancer Control Program has taken a lead in establishing cancer early detection centers throughout the island for detecting common cancers. Tobacco kills many people. More are dying in developing countries due to tobacco use. It causes not only cancers, but affects the heart, blood vessels, and lung health. Many major litigation victories against tobacco industry were recorded among around the world. In Sri Lanka too, we are having two main litigation victories that were recorded. Health warning, one is related to health warning. Pictorial warning to cover 80% of each tobacco pack. The Supreme Court ruled that pack warning do not violate the constitution. It's constitutional. Smoke-free places is the second item. Here again, the Supreme Court found the law constitutional. With regard to the pictorial warning, we are in the eighth position based on the coverage. National Authority on Tobacco and Alcohol has addressed about the ill effects of cinnamon cigarettes that was introduced recently with the involvement of a former minister. The Sri Lanka College of Oncologists took part in the press conference organized by the chairman, Nata. State of Human Resources. Currently, there are 67 board certified consultant clinical oncologists in this country. There are many trainees, two in the PGM MD program. In addition, there are two board certified pediatric oncologists and four board certified hemato oncologists in this country. There are 27 board certified consultant oncologists surgeons are serving in this country. I have to mention late Dr. Anthony Gabriel. He started his work in Maharagama in the year 1971. He is the pioneer in the onco surgery in this country. Then late Dr. Lakdasa Disanayaka also worked in Maharagama Cancer Hospital. On his name we are having an oration too at the SLCO. Then Madam Dr. Indranit Amar Singh also worked for a long time. She is still working in the private sector. And other than that, many uh, onco surgeons are working in this country. Seven board certified consultant gynae oncologists are serving in this country. Here, you all know Dr. Kanishka Karnaradna. He has been working for a long time in the Maharagama, and now he is in the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. Ministry of Health has the vision to have a center of excellence in each province. These are the main stations in the, each province. You can see the atom bringing areas are the places where you have the radiotherapy facilities. We have linear accelerators in five centers. We are not having radiotherapy facility in two provinces, namely Northwestern and Saprahama province. Infrastructure wise, we are getting better facilities in each center. <coughs> Here in National Cancer Institute Maharagama, we have improved a lot with separate clinic block that was built when Dr. Jasanda Aradna was the director, and an <coughs> iconic Rasavi block also built by the efforts of then director Dr. Kanishka Karnaratna and our president elect Dr. Prasad Abhayasinghe. In the past, when the patients from the north are not accessible to reach National Science Institute Maharadama by road, the ICRC facilitated with the transport by ship. 
Anyhow, in the year 2004, after the appointment of oncologist in Jaffna, cancer care services were established and now with the trail program, people of Northern Province have better facilities there. Similarly, all efforts have been made by the Ministry of Health to improve the radiotherapy facilities in order to, in all the provinces, in Kandy, Batakalo, and again in National Cancer Institute, new machines have been installed recently. Among our oncologists, many champions are there. Bone marrow transplant program was commenced by our chief guest, Dr. R. S. Jethilaka, in a small scale in the year 1998 to 1999. Later in the year 2014, Dr. Prasad Abhaysinger has put full effort to have a link with the St. Vincent Hospital in Australia. He has made a lot of efforts and as a result, uh, there was a human resource training happened under the uh, care of Prof. David Ma in Australia and in the year 2016, autologous bone marrow transplant was done under the supervision of Prof. David. These are the results. The total, in total 143 transplants were done, including the first allogenic bone marrow transplant in the year 2019. It's a great achievement, really speaking. Again, another champion, Dr. Vasanda Ratnayaka did the first CAR T cell therapy for the leukemic patient in the year 2020. He has also done an allogenic bone marrow transplant first time in the private sector. Clinical trials are considered as one of the crucial component in a cancer treatment center for newer drug development. There is no one best cancer center without a clinical trial unit in the world. Dr. Mahendra Perra, senior consultant oncologist, is the brainchild for the setting up of this unit in the National Cancer Institute of Sri Lanka. He did involve in three trials. We need to get some more contents, contacts to proceed further to do more trials in Sri Lanka. We have been part of SARC Federation and hosted twice in the year 2008 and 2017. Dr. Sarat Vardegama and Dr. Damendi Pires have been the presidents during that time. Again this year too, Sri Lanka is going to host again. Sri Lanka College of Oncologist members with the National Cancer Control Program have made a guideline to manage breast and cervical cancer to, set, to suit our settings and to our local context. Palliative care has been existed for many years without labeling as such in our setting. Since the year 2012, many sensitization programs of palliative care have been done in various fora. Ministry of Health has organized master trainers in palliative care program with the involvement of Lian Foundation, Singapore. Great teacher in palliative care, Professor Cynthia Go has visited Sri Lanka many times for this purpose and helped us a lot. Very recently, she has passed away and we are really sad about it. Dr. Jayant Balodhra was appointed by the Oswegian Institute of Medicine, University of Colombo, as the chairperson for the palliative care curriculum development, leading to diploma course in palliative care for doctors. We are hoping that MD in palliative care will be finalized by PGM very soon. National Cancer Control Program too has contributed a lot to the palliative care by making a palliative care strategic plan and guidelines for pain management in collaboration with the Sri Lanka College of Oncologist members. There are many hospices functioning throughout the country to support the patients who need care. Near the National Cancer 
Institute of Sri Lanka, Shant Sevana, that was run by the Sri Lanka Cancer Society, the old institution is there. Sahana Sevana, run by the Palliative Association of Sri Lanka and Sai Samiti Hospice, run by the Sadhya Sai Samiti, is situated in Hanbele. One hospice is there in Jeffna, run by the Kane, Cancer it for North and East. One in Andhra run by the Cancer Care Association. One in Karapitiya, run by the Teaching Hospital Karapitiya. And one in Matara, run by Institute of Palliative Medicine. We have many support groups helping our cancer patients, like Indra Trust, Lions Club, Rotary Club, and other well-wishers. We have a Sri Lanka Cancer Research Group which explores the possibility of doing research using the available clinical materials and also collaborating with other organizations locally and in overseas. One such is the collaboration with Sri Lanka Sri Devadapura University Group. We have an official journal called Sri Lanka Journal of Cancer. Now it is available online as well. Thanks to Dr. Krishanti Rajasurya, Dr. Norad Joseph, and Dr. Sanjeeva Masadara for your marvelous effort and help for us. During the presidency of during the presidency of Dr. Dihan in the year 2019, we entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Royal College of Radiologists UK for sharing expertise exchanging information and fellowship arrangements, etc. And we need to enter into similar, more collaborations in the future as well. We are planning to have collaboration with National Cancer Group India and Oxford Oncology Group. Another milestone that we have achieved was formation of Young Oncologist Forum during the presidency of Dr. A.J. Hilmi in, during the last year. It's an encouragement to our young oncologists to form many site-specific cancer study groups and other useful activities. What are the challenges of today and tomorrow? One is improvement in cancer registry. Still, we have to improve the cancer registry. It's a very good job the National Cancer Control Program is doing, but we have to make more staging and mortality and survival for each cancers, at least the common cancers we should know. Efforts to decrease the proportion of patients diagnosed in the advanced cancers. Still we are getting late breast cancers even among, even among the educated population. Through health education and early recognition, through health education and early recognition and screening, advising not to see the traditional healers and alternative therapy physicians for potentially curable early stage cancers. Expansion of radiotherapy services is a must. Two provinces are at the moment without any radiotherapy facility. So linear axillary facility should be made with at least IMRP facility. Issues of waiting list can be managed. Treatment, patients can get their treatment near their home. Brachytherapy facility should be improved. At the moment we have only two brachytherapy patients to the whole nation, but for the cervical cancer, we need the brachytherapy treatment. There are long waiting lists for the treatment. Radioactive iodine, again, we have to improve it because still we are having long waiting lists for radioactive iodine therapy for thyroid cancers. Training of more cancer care professionals is an important thing. At the same time, we have to think about site specialization for better quality cancer care. Expansion and capacity building in palliative care services also should be taken in through implementation of policy, education, drug availability, that is morphine drug availability. Encouraging on cancer research towards innovation and quality improvement also important. This time we are going to introduce the award, innovation award, cancer innovation award for the best exhibit in the 
for the coming uh, academic sessions. The concept of precision oncology and increasing use of immunotherapy are currently underway in high income countries. It will be beyond the scope of our settings as it involves high expenditure for us. Molecular biomarkers, genetic lab is a must in our country. Now we are sending all the samples to India or other countries. Other challenges are migration of oncologists to high income countries and very limited research capacity or opportunities we have at the moment. Let me conclude my talk by emphasizing that I will be committed to help the cancer patient by facing the challenges that we may come across together with you all. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my dear parents, my dear teachers of my school days from Karnal Hindu College and Jeffna Hindu College, and the teachers of Jeffna Medical Faculty and the National Cancer Institute and Postgraduate Institute of Medicine and teachers of the Law Faculty of Open University of Sri Lanka and my dear friends, all others who have constantly inspired me to serve the fellow men in this earth which is a small dot in this huge universe. Thank you.